name is Malcolm Wattershop, and I'm pretty sure this is what... Am I right, Red Bull? Oh my god, what a gannet. I, I think this is what started everything. I think, I believe, this is the video that started this whole adventure with the ginge. Total cost of the motorcycle. We're on part 10. I know there's an 11 and 12. Maybe even a thirteen. Automotive weaponized. Army army tricks. This has gotta be for knobs, on it? I don't know what's in it, but it's gotta be for knobs. Cause it comes in a box. Oh. Alright, cool. Comes in a box that looks like it has a PlayStation inside it. Uh, Army Tricks rear suspension. You know that really well known at Army Tricks. Oh, they do all sorts. ZX10. Ah, shock. There we go. Look at it. There we go. This is it. How much is it? I bet it's ridiculous. I want to purchase. I want to purchase now. Oh. Uh, hashtag that. If we search that, can I find a price? Oh, we get loads of taps for your radiators. <laughs> uh, so that says this had a price. Two clicks out. Oh, that's what it is. It's two clicks out. Look at that horrible exhaust. What the hell is going on there? Now, does anyone recognise it? Is it someone else's shock? I don't recognise it. It's got alien technology in it. Wide range valve piston helps to simple harmonic motion control function for extra comfort, even on toughest road conditions. Does it help you land a bike properly if you launch it off a cliff? But, I just noticed here it said... 1,180 ADD, but I don't know what ADD is. Translate this page. We got. I always go to images. No, it just seems to be, be taps. People think it's, it's taps. Have they got a better name for it? No, that's just the name, isn't it? Let me try that. And we've got a price. Armytricks.com. Yamaha. There's loads of them. They all seem to be the same. The same shock. What? What? Let's have a look. Watch on YouTube. Here we go. You ready? Oh, oh right, cool. What? They've got 368,000 Shut up. So, oh, they make a lot of car stuff. And bike stuff. Is this just some really shite company? Looks like it. Pedigree, you know, pedigree. Right, what, what? Is there an about page? Car exhaust, motorcycle suspension, and exhausts. That's what you do with it. <laughs> you just you just do this stuff, All right? Is it like brand Yamaha? Why not R seven? Oh, they they only just started doing it recently then. Weaponize. Oh my god, that looks hideous. Oh my god, what are you doing? Those turds that want to like turds. What's it say? So basically, stainless steel decatted headers with link pipe, carbon fiber muffler, and chrome. Not, not too long. 
<laughs> Not for too long, it won't be. So, yeah. It's foreign, as you can tell. This is looks like the Philippines. By the roads and the signs. Yeah, so it's some shit company. Right, cool. We know it is, so we can take their shocks. It's um Yeah, this this is this is GP breaking, is this? So cool. As it uh, before we go any further, has it got a link in the description? Because that kind of gives us an idea that is yeah. As soon as, as soon as he's got a, a discount code that has his name on it, like literally the name, that means that he's, he's sponsored. Oh, it's got a sticker on it. I don't like stickers on shocks. Mmm, quality. Yo, CJ, this is Kevin. Welcome to Project Code Green. Hi, Kevin. The writing, right? So you see that the way that the writing is, I'm going to be racist right now, but you've seen this writing before. It's how someone at a Chinese restaurant, Chinese takeaway, would write down your order in English, right? And I've, I've seen this kind of writing thousands of times before when I've been to China and Korea. Because they have, um, you know, the ideograms, because of the way that they write, um, when they write English, they transfer those writing skills. So basically the quips, the... It's almost like writing with a quill. You know, it's like strike or a fountain pen. You just do one strike, one strike, one strike. You do lines. And this is very much like that. So I'll put money on it. It's a, it's a, 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 chi a Chinese company I'll put money on or a Korean one. Probably a Korean one. Welcome to the Philippines. Back to the channel, guys. I already have a huge smile on my face because Army Trix sent out a super sick shock for the ZX-10R. Maybe you've heard of the company Army Trix before, but they make... You haven't, I don't think. ...make a ton of exhaust for cars, and now they're getting into the motorcycle gang. They've got exhaust. You didn't put the beginning of your video. This is a sponsored... They look hideous. They've got... The first what? The first ever v valve tronic motorcycle exhaust in the world. Switch between loud and quiet with the push of a button. Probably is from Singapore because they've got stupid aftermarket laws. They've got shocks, and this is for the ZX10R specifically. Man, it looks so good. It's very easy. It look it's specifically although when I looked the Yamaha one looked the same. Look at the chatter on that where the machine oh god. Do adjust right on this triangle down here. And I just love the black and green on this. From what I know they're getting into the motorcycle gang and they got a ton of sweet products coming, so But are they good? Are you just gonna are they giving you shit for free so you're just going to publish them not knowing if they're good or not? Great, good lad. Definitely. You got to remember as well is that when you've got two hundred thousand subscribers and it, a lot of the you see the comments, a lot of these young kids are young kids like him and his girlfriends. It's impressionable that this stuff matters. Check them out. Big shout out to Kevin for hooking me up with this shock. Man, I'm excited to put this on the bike. And as you saw, I got a very nice note. His real name's Chor, but whatever. From Kevin. As you can see, a very down to earth company. I personally watched Army. Oh, is 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 a, a down to earth company. Really? Tricks back in the day when they did exhaust on Goon Squad's cars. Nothing but good things to say about Army Tricks. Let's. You've never had anything from them ever. You have never used anything of theirs ever. Prove me wrong. Put it on the bike. It's good. It's good. Remember, it's good. Look how much preload adjust. Well, look how much pre you can tell it's shock shite. Look how much preload adjustment you've got. But all of this isn't been used. Or are you serious preload right now? Because this should be the middle of the range. If that's the standard setting, 
Wow. What we'll do is we'll get this shock that does work and we'll replace it with this shite because it's got a green spring. Jack it up by whatever. Oh, yeah, he didn't tighten, tighten up the nut, did he? So he had to transplant this to this chassis. Remember, this is a brand new chassis. And he didn't. I didn't see him talk that up. And every time he talks something up, he goes out of his way to show you that he does. So let's see if he does. Maybe you should have done this when you're. You remember, this was a chassis with no, with no engine in it. No shock in it, no swing arm in it, and now he's digging everything apart again just to put a shock in. It's shocking. Right, now, can you fit that piggyback reservoir in there? See, that's very specific, isn't it? It's in a very specific location. Look at that, they've gone out the... No, that's not a fit, is it? <laughs> Let's hope this doesn't clout anything. Oh, Jesus Christ alive. Oh, yeah, people are talking about these reservoirs being the right way up and all that rubbish. Remember last time with the, with the Project Isaac stuff? And it's like, this one's at the bottom. This was closest to the wheel, not up here at the top. So people talk about unsprung mass and all the rest of it. Unsprung mass matters when it's big masses, but when it's either side of a spring, eh, eh. And number two is, it is at the bottom, not at the top. As it refers to top and bottom. Wait there, are you, is he doing what I think he's doing? Is he doing the preload based on the length of the spring to this one, you do realise that they are different springs. This is a different spring. Uh, the coil diameter is different. The number of coils is different. It's a different spring altogether. It's a different... The diameter is different. Are you sure that's not going to clout anything? Oh, it hardly moves. And we don't know, though, if this reservoir is not clouting under here. Because the spring's wider. Uh, how close is that to that swing arm? There's not much room in there, is there? Wow. That has got to be the easiest shock install I've ever done in my entire life. But I don't think you've ever done one. But I've only done one shock install in my life. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you got to give it to him. That's quite funny. That thing fit in there perfectly. And man, Kawasaki does a great job allowing me to reach all the bolts and swap it right out. I'm just in love with this green. Army tricks. you killed it. We're but you can't see it. I'm on riding soon, so i Can you see it? I'm gonna let you guys know how this thing feels on the road. But now, let's put some of the bike back together and move on to the left side of the bike. That's how you can. That's how much you can see of it. The green spring, basically nothing. Proper worth it. junk 
in the shock. Oh, it screws to the inside of the fairing, right? He's doing it off the bike, good lad. God, that's a fucking Jesus Christ, that's a heavy bracket. It's weird that they have a bracket that attaches the rectifier to a bracket that attaches it to a fairing. And then instead of just having the rectifier bolt directly to the fairing. Because all you've done is just made it heavier, really. Stiffening up slightly, yeah, but it seems a bit weird. See that I've got some Kawasaki button head things for the Z900, but the way they are is that they have like the round bit there, but instead of being just a, a button head like this, you know, they're not like that, they're like this, where they've literally got this going on. But it's like this weird shape. So they are specific. Not that the head really matters. You could just use regular button heads. But these are just button heads. So door bar can count. Depends how much they are. It's like... Yeah, it depends how much they are. But I think you could just buy a pack of button heads. And then you'd have loads... You know, you buy 30 stainless ones of 30 mil, 25 mil and 20 mil. You'd be laughing. Most of them are M6s and M5s. Yeah, these ones. See them funky ones there? They're the ones that are all... On the Z900, all of the fairings are them ones. And they've got these nylon washers underneath. You see them bad boys. So them with these are the fairing ones. These might be as well, but I think they are the fairing ones for this, this specific bike. But did you buy rivets from Kawasaki? That would be funny if you did. Oh look, there's some units there. You know, you you um, attach engine mounts to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good fun. Oh, that's great. So you can move the wheel a bit, but I don't think he's going lock to lock there. That wiring is looking way better now. We got the heated grips harness to put in. Let's keep going. He literally, I think, bought the, the rivets from Kawasaki, which is silly because that rivet gun came, came with some. This is what you want it. You want it on its front wheel so you can go lock to lock and make sure nothing's binding up. Got another bit of plastic trim. Wow. Oh, he's drilling holes. Do you see that? Oh, we're 
taking cables off again and taking panels out again. This obviously took twice as long. It's a shame that you didn't have like a... It's alright getting a manual off the internet that's PDF. You can look on your phone. But what you really need is to buy the manual so it's in your hand. Oh, it did. It just didn't. Yeah, we haven't seen him use it. Uh. First time I've seen him do it. You see all these cables here, you see this white matters. Look at all them. Well, you're missing a fairing bit, aren't you? Because you can see it all. So them two black bits that got to go in. Do they go in now or before? All that wiring was a tough one, but a great learning experience. It's all tidied up now. And we just received the heated grips glue. So with all the heated grip wiring plugged in, let's put this handlebar on for good. Oh, this is falling off. Stop it. They call me Picasso. No, they don't. got this for don't know that's right i'm super excited <laughs> there's, a, there's a selection that says work <laughs> do it now ren tuning sent out a stage two tune for the zx10r can't wait if you guys are seriously looking to make some power on your bikes check out Brent tuning's website they got tons of tunes for all types of bikes i personally did a flash on my s1000 double r and man that thing is insanely fast on the road so much fun i took it out last sunday oh my goodness that thing is so much fun it completely helps the bike run way better especially when you have a full exhaust system and an air filter system on the zx10r we got an air filter and a full exhaust man this tune is going to work out perfectly definitely check he hasn't done it yet this is the thing, Ginge, right? As soon as you do it, why don't you just give it to one of your um, subscribers and then when they're finished with it, they can give it to somebody else. And you can just keep on handing this thing to everyone and then just cut the company dry. Check out a tune for your bike. Go stage one or go crazy and go stage two. We got some hardware to down. These words mean nothing. Download from the PC to this interface right here and then the interface connects to the harness right in the back here. I love that, the interface thing. You could actually just program your laptop to do it. You don't need that fancy box. This power cable connects directly to the positive side on the battery, giving power to the interface. So let's get that file downloaded onto the interface and flash the bike. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so they can sell you this expensive bit of kit. After all that pissing around, you didn't charge the battery. For God's sake. Why don't you take the battery out with the bike and then stick it on the side and charge it? Like a normal ginger. don't need a lap shite you can just plug a laptop into it they're just trying to sell you something you don't need All right, successfully completed. We just identified the current file on the ECU on the bike so far. Now I'm gonna use that genius client that I just downloaded on the laptop to send the stock file to Brent Tuning, and then Brent Tuning's gonna send me that stage two flash. And while we're waiting for that, let's put this bike back together. Ah, uh, the fact that you've gotta get the software from them probably means that that's how they stay in the loop, so we couldn't circumvent them, which is a shame. 
Yeah, you don't need all that nonsense. You could just have a USB that plugs into the mic. It's like, it's just pinouts. knows what pliers are. It's bizarre. What are these pliers you speak of? Ah, <laughs> oh, just overspray comes to mind. Oh no, he didn't learn. He's drilling them out on the bike. I would have thought... come off again. Oh, he hasn't done this again. See, people say he's learning. Is he? He probably thought that was rapping again. And you got to remember in one of his videos, he actually melted the exhaust. Melted the fairings with the exhaust, sorry. He actually did that because he didn't put the heat reflective stuff on. Almost like the OEMs know what they're doing. Ah, has he got the little buttons for the front? Has he remembered them? I have to keep an eye out for that. I bet he hasn't. What's he hitting with a the hammer there? <gasps> what is he doing? We caught him doing something dodgy. I love it when I catch him doing something dodgy. What is he doing? What are you doing, you little Brillo pad? Right, stand up. He's spinning the wheel. Is the disc catching? He's yeah, he's, he's look what he's doing. Jiggling the wheel, what is he doing? Are the, are the forks bent? We picked up a new front axle and bearings for the front wheel just in case. Now I'm gonna drill these. Just in case. These holes a little bit wider so that these clips can actually fit. All right, he has remembered that. Boom. Then we'll torque everything down. By the OEM ones. Down in the front to spec. See, look, his forks, look, he's got some forks These damage. clips can actually fit. Boom. Then we'll torque everything. He's got scraping along there, look. So have these forks taking a good bend. Anything down in the front to spec, including the calipers and the wheel. I'll just knock them against it, so it's fine. Just because he's going to chip the Cerakote on them. Or you're gonna, there's a chance you would. I'm glad he didn't drill through to the radiator then. <laughs> Oh, 
he didn't forget them. So he's bought a new axle because reasons. Oh yeah, I did bend the rotors back a little bit with the mallet. I'll show you the difference when I roll the wheel. I bent them, oh, for God's sake. So his rotors are warped on a brand new bike, which means they're knackered. It could be the carriers, and he's just like, I bent them back, it's fine. The brakes, it's not like they're under any stress, is it? Wow. I thought I said new bearings. It means new wheel spaces, but no bearings. Then. I love how he talks one down with it. He talks one down without the other one being even done up. literally talking that down this one's loose <laughs> nice Doing. Oh, he hasn't tightened the pinch bolts on the right side. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> what a tip. Otherwise, the nut just rotates. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. Everything's straight, the fox is fine, don't worry about it. It's a bloody death trap. But all that matters is that it looks good. Who cares about the suspension? Who cares about the wheels being aligned? Who cares about brakes? Nobody. Proper sure of yourself there. Man, that color looks so good. This camera does not do justice. Let's get. That, that's all that matters is the color. That's all that matters. Get the rest of these tank fairings on. Take it for a spin. Pause it here a second. I've got my USB lead. Look at that. Charge it up. Is that even working? Yeah. Charge it. It's not charging. Why are you not charging? <laughs> Why are you not charging? Charge your bastards. Let's try this one. We may as well. There we go. 
Go for a shot. All the way up to charge. Up charge. Here comes the book. Right then. Right. Let's crack on. It's ah. quite a long one. This is 25 minutes long. I did forget to bleed the brakes, so let's do that real quick, because I am trying <laughs> to get outside. I can't wait to ride this thing. Oh. He's actually small, isn't he? I didn't realize how short he was. Well, right. He sits on the bike flat footed, but he ain't got the seat on. He ain't got the seat on. Yeah, he must be like five foot two or something. No, it matters. He just didn't realise he was that short. Ginger and short. Oh, God. Amazing. All right, I left that rear seat off because I want to see if this thing starts before I put those back on. Here we go. He's charged the battery, right? I've seen people do this. What do you put your hand in the way for? Reasons. Oh, okay, cool. Alright, let's put that seat on. Let's suit up, go for a ride. Big shout out to Army Tricks. Check out that six spring, that green. You, you can hardly see. Pops so well on the bike. Does it pop so well? Ooh, what's that? Shout out to Army Tricks. Check out that six spring, that green. What's this? Is this where this has crashed into here? That's gnarly. 
that his second hand frame? It is, it is new to him, but second hand frame? Jesus Christ. Pops so well on the bike. That is looking, it is the frick. God, this chassis looks like shite. Actually, oh no, he did spray this, didn't he? Yeah. That is so killer. You can, you can, you have to zoom in to see. Pops it pops so well on the bike. <laughs> look. Oh, it looks, it looks, it looks great. That is so killer. Can't see it. <laughs>
Oh, that can kill people. I don't know how that happened, but we got to adjust that right now. Oh, of course, it's your awesome adjusters. You know, like the OEM bits are shit, but the aftermarket stuff's amazing. Who was it in the comments? I think it was Alan Richardson who said, what have you got against all this billet aftermarket stuff? You just hate shit that's after... He was literally talking about these adjusters. They're not needed. Wow. He also said that it, them adjusters make it easier to adjust. It's complete bollocks. Right. Alan, you're just talking shite. But, um... Don't trust me. The proof is in the video. Oh, claw hammer's out. What are you hammering on for a chip? Tell you what, he's learnt well off the church. Is what you do is you go around public streets, and then whenever you see a kid, you stop. <laughs> is this light here? This is all the number plate shit. Look, fucking hell. again. Back to the petrol station. <laughs> Literally. Oh, we're back. At the gas station, let's see how much fuel we used. Well, we That's exactly the same. Went through about four bucks of gas. Best four bucks of gas I've ever used. How's your chain looking? Could be a bit slack, actually. I've got the heated grips on right now, level three. They're actually pretty nice and toasty on both sides. Definitely not as toasty as the S1000 over there. Those things hurt with the gloves on. The controls are... Well, that's not, that's not good, right? Well, it all depends about temperature, doesn't it? It depends how hot it is. A bit confusing. Or how cold it is, sorry. But the heated grips are fantastic. Now the dash is going crazy. It started going crazy when that chain was super loose. Still don't know how to fix this. I believe the engine light is for the O2. It's saying everything's shit the bed. KOS. Two sensor I unplugged previously with the exhaust. And that KLCM. Oh, I don't know what they all are. And like you guys saw before with the chain, it was super loose. Look at this. That's loose again. I knew it. I could tell at the petrol station. So a chain that's the correct tension under its own weight, you won't really see it bow, and you could see his chain bowing. Oh, forget it. Moving on. Wow. Well, what happens? I think he sells the S1000. I think he sells the Honda. No, he does sell the Honda. We've seen that in a video. He throws the Yamaha off a cliff... So he sells this one, throws this one off a cliff. I don't know what he does with this. I'm not sure, and I don't know what he does with this, but I don't think we see them currently, so I think they're gone. So 
So there could be something wrong with this one's forks. He bought a new axle. I wonder why he bought a new axle. He then bent the rotors back with a hammer, a rubber hammer handle, like you do. Uh, the Yamaha, fucking that Sayonara did, didn't matter, did it? Oh, but he lowered the shocks on him and probably fucked something up. The BMW, I can't remember what he does, so I can't remember if there's anything wrong with it. There's just so many little issues in all of these builds, all of these bikes, all of these restorations. Restorations that it's hard to keep up. It's hard to remember which one's which. That's some footage I'll never forget. The Army Trick shot. That's some footage I will never forget. What footage? In the rear of the bike worked absolutely flawless, super comfortable and adjustable. I did adjust it pretty low because I'm pretty short. I, I don't think you adjusted that. What did you adjust? I just feel super comfortable having flat footed on the ground whenever I'm on the bike. Feels He's barely flat footed though. Way more maneuverable for me. I like it. And I, it's, it's a small bike. I'd be lying if I told you I knew how to adjust those shocks properly for street use, for track use. I just like how they look. It just simply... But you said it's great because it's fully adjustable and then you adjusted it, but I don't think you did. Simply adds another piece of pizzazz to the puzzle. All right, what was it like riding this thing? So fast, unbelievably fast. The bike feels so light as well compared to the other bikes. This thing is so fast and it doesn't even have the tune yet. I sent over the stock ECU file to Chris at Brent Tuning and he's gonna send me the stage two flash for this bike. He reckons it's fast, it feels faster than the SP and the BMW. I'm a quack fan, right? Don't get me wrong, but I, I think they're all about the same. Oh, and the R, the R1M. Back on Monday when they're in the office. And you guys just heard that? I think that's the tank purge system running. It's ran like five times after I got home. I could go on for hours on this bike, but let me give you a price break. Yeah, so what they do is is that the tanks vent when they get hot so the tanks don't explode, unless it's a KTM. <laughs> and um, that little box, that little purge box, is to catch all the bad smells so it doesn't kill the vegans. Down on the bike so far because we got more stuff coming for this thing. All right. One day I'll tell you about my vegan final solution. I got the numbers, total cost ooh, ooh, here we go. of the motorcycle. The bike from the auction cost me six. The weirdest thing is he's got this little smirk on his face and it's like, it's almost laughable. And it's like, it's not, it's like it cost him, it's dude, it's your dad's money. He still lives at home. And I know that for a fact now. So someone, someone who knows him told me that he, yes, he lives at home. So you don't have this much money, but live at home. So it's his dad's money. Total cost of the motorcycle. The bike from the auction cost me $6,938 and that includes fees. Now the next price is parts and that is from eBay. And eBay I spent $5,724.11. That's where I found the headers, the exhaust. So it's seven grand for the bike. Seven grand plus five, 12. We're ordered with 12 grand and a bunch of used parts. Next major web... Oh my god, did he say he got the exhaust from eBay? 11 cents. That's where I found the headers, the exhaust, and a bunch of used parts. Next major website that I used for parts was Partzilla, where I got all my OEM Kawasaki parts. I spent $3,289.41 at Partzilla. Now finally to conclude, I got some parts from you guys and I spent $817.94 with you guys. So thank you. Now the boys, you put an I in it instead of a Y. Why bother? That brings the total cost of this ZX-10R 2021 to 17800 Oh, it's the cost of the bike. How much is the new one? And this isn't a special edition one, I don't think. How much is a new one? I know you said it in dollars, but... Oops. How much is a new one? This is a, a an anniversary one, which we don't want actually. No, not Auto Trader. No, I don't want that one. I actually like the colours though. It's a lot better than that shit he's got. So, 
build um, it's it's none of these oh my god it is it literally is it li this is in dollars I don't know how we've got on here but the stock price of this all black is just a stock one 2024 brand new the latest version so far better than his will set you back seventeen thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars no previous owners brand new what did he pay seventeen thousand eight hundred so basically the same we can get the Akrapovich bullshit for an extra so you could say you could say it's this so a brand new one with the exhaust system fitted and all oh and the heated grips because he's got heated grips. So a brand new one. How are all these? Race oh god. No, I don't need any of that shite. God, this other bearings and everything. Connecting rod bushings. They call them bushings. Mm. Um so there's literally obviously a list of all of the parts here, but a brand new one. Brand new, you register it, never been ridden, full warranty. Brand new, full warranty, brand new, all of the parts have never been crashed, scratched or anything. And and with an a Krapovich exhaust like he's got. No, none of this seat cowling rubbish. Not a protection rubbish. Will cost you. Was it eight? Yeah, it said oh, nineteen thousand four hundred. So basically, it's a twenty twenty four one as well. It's a joke. It, no, no, because it's got a salvage title. You're not gonna get this money for it. Fuck. And it will come with new tires, new brakes, new discs that he hasn't bent. Uh, what else do you do with this? Oh, this, the frame is scratched and all the rest of it. You've seen all the damage to the frame that you had to respray. The engine's brand new with no... What is it? You know, everything's brand new. Literally everything's brand new. So a brand new bike is going to cost you... Well, the base model is worth a lot more than this thing is. And you've got to remember, this is on a salvage title. So you're not going to get anywhere near for that. It, it's literally just for YouTube. That's what it is. It's to drum up and become a million subscriber channel. You know, that kind of thing. It's just to get bigger on YouTube. Which you know, it, which he's is he's, he's becoming successful. He's got two hundred thousand subs, uh, pretty much. And when did he start his channel? Uh, when did he start it? Uh, twenty twenty. So, and it was October twenty twenty. So three years, three and a half years. Say, three and a half years he's been doing this channel. And he's got 200,000 subscribers and he'll be making all these sponsorship deals and all this shit. Um, if the world was blind, how many people would you impress? If you don't fail, you've not even tried. And for some reason, he's got a picture of him giving two fingers, two in the pink, to an alloy wheel for some reason that's off a car. <laughs> cool. Cool story, bro. You know what I mean? Um, awesome. Um, it's just to get big on YouTube, which is fine. You can do what you want. You know what I mean? But it, it, you know the intention behind it all. Hundred and eighty-three dollars and forty. Ninety. Eighteen grand. Seven cents. And unfortunately, that is actually not the final price for this bike. I have a. Oh, oh. A lot more modifications and goodies on the way for this beast. And like always, all glory goes to God for this rebuild. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya. So he's going to spend a lot more. All right, cool. Cool story, bro. And he's still got a problem because the change keeps on going slack for some bizarre reason. Probably because the, I don't know, maybe he hasn't tightened anything up. <laughs> Maybe the shop just keeps on wandering. Maybe his adjusters are awesome. Oh, I can I can do all things with him, Christ, who strengthens me. 
Philip and the Sapiens at quarter past four. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.